Okay, so uh, we're going to get started here. I do understand that there's still some people that need to order food and, uh, uh, you know, maybe there will be uh, some drink coming around. So um, try to, uh, you know, don't worry if you uh, have to yell uh, over me at some point and uh, yell for a drink or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, we do these programs uh, almost every Sunday. We're not going to do one next Sunday because it is Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, it tends to uh, be self-defeating. Not a, you know, not enough people come out on Super Bowl Sunday to a Civil War event. Uh, but uh, we are going to continue them this year into March, except in March on Sunday evenings, we're going to do a shorter program starting at 7.30. So we're not going to go with the sixth time because in, you know, starting in March, we get really busy in the restaurant in the evening on Sunday. So we figured the dinner crowd will be gone and we can do a few programs uh, starting at 7.30. And, uh, and we'll announce the topics on our uh, Facebook feed and our regular feed. Um, so you can check out what topics are what uh, as they come up. But tonight, I decided I'd talk a little bit about Jenny Wade. Now, I think I've done a program on a variation of the Jenny Wade topic every year I've done these programs. So uh, I try to make it different every time and talk about the newest and the latest information concerning Jenny Wade. But, uh, oh, let me get something. Okay. So, you know, the story of Jenny Wade is one that is told by virtually every battlefield guide on every tour of the battlefield, at least I hope. I remember uh, my colleague Wayne Motts telling me one time that when you're a battlefield tour guide and you have people that don't know anything about the battle, you probably shouldn't name any more than 10 people on your tour. You shouldn't be talking about the different names of the 120 generals that fought here. <laughs> and you think about it, what 10 people do you talk about on the tour? Maybe uh, Pickett, Robert E. Lee, General Meade, I hope. You know, but Jenny Wade is one of those people that everyone talks about in their tour. Do you remember saying that, Wayne? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was still good advice. It was good advice. <laughs> So, uh, the story of Jenny Wade is very simple. On the morning of the third day of the battle, in a violent sharpshooter action at the edge of the town, she was in the kitchen of her sister's house when a bullet came through the side door of the house, passed through the panel on a door, open door between the kitchen and the parlor, and hit her in the back, and she was killed instantly. She was the only civilian to be killed in the actual fighting of the battle. And you know, there are 50,000 casualties in Gettysburg, and somewhere around 10,000 men were killed in the battle or died in the days and weeks after the battle in the hospitals around the town. But she was the only civilian to be killed during the fighting. There were others that died in the aftermath of the battle, and uh, of various causes, um, but only civilian killed during the battle. And she attained a notoriety very quickly. Of course, there is another story uh, that generally is talked about when we discuss the death of innocent Jenny Wade, and that's the fact that she had a boyfriend in the Union Army named Jack Skelly. Jack Skelly had joined the 2nd Pennsylvania Infantry and then later the 87th Pennsylvania Infantry. And in June of 1863, his unit was stationed at Winchester, Virginia. And in a battle at a place called Stevenson's Depot on the morning of June 15, 1863, Jack Skelly was wounded. 
as luck would have it, his unit had fought against a local, or well, a Virginia unit, the 2nd Virginia Infantry. And the two units had met each other. And after the fighting, Wesley Call, who was formerly from Gettysburg, was walking along the field and noticed people that he had grown up with, people that he had known in childhood, wounded on the battlefield, and Jack Skelly was wounded in the fighting at Winchester. So Wesley and Jack talked. And it's pretty well documented. Um, of course, there is a story that kind of surfaces much more recently, and that's that Jack asked Wesley to give a message to Jenny Way if he should ever find himself back in Gettysburg again. What we do know is that Jack supposedly gave Wesley a message to give to his mom if he found himself in Gettysburg again. Now, what's interesting about this is we know, for the sake of the story, that two weeks later, Wesley Culp is going to be in Gettysburg for the battle. But there is no way that Jack Skelly could have possibly anticipated that Wesley would be in Pennsylvania at all, or Gettysburg for that matter, at that moment. So, of course, two weeks later, the Battle of Gettysburg, Wesley Culp visits his sister on Middle Street and tells her he has a message for Jack's mom. Um, he tells her to have Jack, he tells them to have Jack's mom there the next morning and he'll deliver the message. But he goes back to his unit on Culp Sale, near Culp Sale. He's killed in the fighting on July 2nd or July 3rd. And the message, whatever it may be, is never delivered. And of course, some people suggest part of the message was for Jenny Wade. So Jack Skelly, um, I should say Wesley Culp dies in the fighting. Jenny Wade dies in the sharpshooter action at the edge of the town. And Jack Skelly dies in Winchester, Virginia uh, on um, July 12, 1863. So Jack never learns that Jenny was the only civilian killed in the fighting. And apparently Jenny had not known that Jack was wounded at the Battle of Winchester. And so today, Jack and Jenny are buried in Evergreen Cemetery, a short distance from here, about 75 yards away from each other. And you know, depending on the variation of the story that is told, there's often details added to the story, like Wesley Culp is killed, you know, in sight of his family's, you know, home, which of course, that's his second cousin that owns Culp's Hill, not his father, you know. Um, so, and, and again, it became very popular to suggest that this whole message between um, Jack and Wesley was a message for Jenny Wade. There's really no evidence of that at all. And then, of course, another story that you hear often is that Jack and Jenny are secretly engaged. But if they're secretly engaged and they both die, how do we know that? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think it's, it's one of the best human interest stories we have of the battle. The, uh, the, and I always have thought it would make a great made-for-TV movie. <laughs> which, you know, it's not really, has never really been done. But uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the evolution of the story of Jenny Wade being killed and talk about different facets of the story. And of course, in a general sense, for those of you who are not very familiar with it, uh, I want to tell a little bit, of the, talk a little bit about some of the details. But for the ones who are familiar with it, I have some new interesting details that you don't know about yet. So I always like to have something, you know, new. So early on, the story was told. It was in a couple of our, the local newspapers, the compiler and the Star and Sentinel. Um, and I think on July 7th, it was uh, noted locally in the paper that uh, Mary Virginia Wade had been killed. And um, uh, it was reported in the New York Times early on, and so the word got out there that a, a civilian was accidentally killed during the battle. And details of the story emerged in books 
and in articles and newspaper articles after the Civil War. This is actually from um, a book called Inadotes, uh, A Pictorial History of Inadotes of the Civil War uh, that came out in 1867. And in this version, they, they talk about before the battle, actually in this one, Mrs. Wade, meaning Jenny's probably married, uh, is killed. Loyal bread baker at Gettysburg. <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt that Jenny Wade is actually making, you know, uh, kneading dough, in, in whether you want to say it's for biscuits or bread, for the soldiers uh, during the battle. I don't think there's any doubt of that. Although people dispute that fact later. John Rupp, who wrote a letter to his sister a couple weeks after the battle, said, that Jenny was killed while she was preparing dough for bread. Um, here they mention that before the battle and while our forces uh, awaited assault, a woman named Wade was engaged in baking bread for our troops in a house situated directly in range of the guns of both armies. The rebels had repeatedly ordered her to quit the premises. I like that, how the rebels ordered her out. They're yelling up the street, I guess. But she had invariably refused to do so. At length, the battle opened, and while still engaged in her patriotic work, a ball pierced her loyal breast, and she fell. Ah. <laughs> loyal <laughs> breast. <laughs> in uh, 1875, Samuel Bates wrote a history of the battle, and he has a little thing about Jenny Wade in it. And, um, uh, you know, I... I I love some of the way this, this, some of this stuff and the way it's written. The battle raged furiously, and as the one side or the other surged to and fro over the plain, more imminent became her danger. But she was blind to the portents of destruction and deaf to the awful voice of the storm, while the savory lobe steadily issued from her hands. <laughs> In an evil hour, as the conflict came near and more near, wouldn't that be nearer? An enemy's bullet pierced her pure breast, and she sank in death, pouring out her life blood while ministering to the victims of the strife. Good stuff. So early on, also in this article, there's also the first mention that at the same time she's killed. Oh, actually, I think it was in the other one too which was 1866, that at the time she's killed, there is a Confederate officer that's also killed, and they were in the preparation of a coffin for him, and uh, Jenny Wade's body is just, that coffin is repurposed for Jenny Wade's coffin. And in some of the early accounts, it's said that it's Barksdale. But it seems later, when you read the specific information we have about that, there's not that many details. I mean, it's told a lot, but it seems it's actually Colonel Isaac Avery's coffin, which makes a lot more sense in Barksdale. Oh, there I had that quote. I, I even had that. I blew it up so I wouldn't have to read it that way. <laughs> now, in 1885, her story is told in a tour book that sold around the battlefield. And um, in this version, it's kind of interesting that they tell the story of her patriotism and how, oh, she compared to John Burns. I'm sure John Burns like that. <laughs> and uh, talks about how she perished in the din of that awful fray. And she now sleeps where the sweet flowers bloom and the perfume-laden air wafts lovingly over Cemetery Hill. And it actually talks about her being buried in Evergreen Cemetery, and it talks about what her grave says or her tombstone says in his account. But um, also in his account, this is the first mention I can find in written literature. And again, it's um, 1885. And it says that Jenny Wade had been engaged to, mar um, to be married to a young man, Johnston Skelly, who was killed at the Battle of Carter's Woods about a month previous to her own death. So I like to point that out because I like to point out the fact that, you know, oftentimes people say, well, you know, the thing about them being engaged, that was made up much, much, much later and added to the story. But 
it was actually added to the story early on. Hello Gettys Nerds, it's Matt and I hope you enjoyed that preview of our premium content that can now be found over at Patreon.com. I want to make sure that the interest you already have in Gettysburg is enriched with our premium content. Your support means the world to me because that means it will be easier to produce content that will bring Gettysburg to more people and hopefully more people to Gettysburg. And the podcast episodes are just the beginning. So please go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash addressing Gettysburg and become a patron. I thank you in advance.